Hi, and welcome to this talk about the Smart Cooling Library. My name is Johan Rudin, and I'm a developer here at Wolfram Research. This talk will present how you can design, simulate, and analyze cooling architectures for automotive or other applications in a quick and efficient way. The library is developed by the Austrian Institute of Technology in Vienna. It is especially well suited for use in the automotive domain. You can directly buy the library in the Wolfram System Modeler Library Store. The idea behind the library is to help users minimize or completely eliminate the need to perform costly real-life tests. This presentation will focus on an example of an electrical vehicle. The library contains complete functionality for designing cooling systems. It has pumps, fans, pipes, sensors to process measured levels, as well as a media such as water and air. Full documentation is provided in the product and on the web. We'll look at a practical example, an electrical vehicle battery. In order to increase the range of an electrical vehicle, there are basically two different strategies. Increase the battery size or reduce the energy consumption, for example by reducing the energy consumption of the auxiliary components. And that's what we'll look at in this example. As for the design goals, we'll check the function of the on-off control strategy used by the real-world car. We'll also want to analyze the power consumption. The cell temperatures must not exceed a certain temperature during operation, which could lead to decreased performance. And we want to see what happens during a drive cycle, under specific dynamic conditions. To solve this design challenge, we'll need the following. We'll create a thermal model of the battery system construct a system with a cooling strategy. Pipes with conductive heat transfer will provide mass flow, pressure and volume flow, and pump and fan models. All of this is available in System Modeler with the Smart Cooling Library. As an example, let's take a look at the convection pipe in System Modeler. It has two flow ports here on the left and the right, which contain variables for the pressure, enthalpy, enthalpy flow, mass and mass flow of the medium in the pipe. The pipe also has heat flow connectors where you can connect heat directly to the pipe's medium or the wall of the pipe. The battery model we'll use consists of 88 cells connected in series. The cells all have individual thermal inertia. In this picture you can see the layout with 40 cells in the front, 4 cells on each side here for a total of 8 and then another block of 40, so in total 88 cells. Coolant in the form of air flows from the front to the back, between and above the cells. You can see how the cool air is blown in here and passes through out. Now we enter into one of these components with 40 cells in them. You can see the inv individual cells arranged in five lines with eight cells in each. And on the side here you can see the pipes, so the pipes that transport air above and between the cells. If we zoom in and look at cell 19, we can see the connection to the pipes on both sides here, and the connection to the pipe that's above. To increase the fidelity of the model, there's also a thermal conducting material between each cell. Let's put all of this together. We have the cell models and the parts to put the stack together. Here's the complete system. The timetable here will dictate how much electrical energy is needed to drive the car through the FTP drive cycle that we'll use. An electrical loss model will then be connected to heat losses, so all of these are connected to the individual cells. Depending on the temperature sensed in the cells, this is the temperature sensor, a hysteresis controller will turn on or off and thereby have the fan blow or not blow. If any cell gets too hot, the fan will start to blow until the highest temperature is under a specified limit. This could be expanded to a more detailed model of the fan machinery if needed. So now we can simulate the complete model. I pick out five different cells here to keep track of throughout the simulation. 
the first blue cell here is close to the inlet cold air and naturally it stays the coolest during the simulation. The cell in the back corner is the hottest, cell 88 here. This seems intuitive. We can clearly see where the controller turns on and off. On and off. The dynamics of the drive cycle can also be seen in the fluctuations here in the curves. To sum this up, the Smart Cooling Library contains components for cooling circuits, including pipes, pumps, fans, media, coolers, engine models. It's directly available from the System Modeler Library Store, and we've demonstrated this with a practical application example.